Thank you very much for uh, sharing, Dino. Uh, and um, we are going to move into a new industry that will be transformed as we speak. And why do I know that? Because it's a beautiful idea. And the leader behind the company is somebody that has been attacking and transforming industries uh, for a very long time. I met him uh, ages ago when he was uh, heading up a weird company called Skyper in Estonia. And they said everything will be IP tele telephony. And Niklas uh, Sandström and, and him and a small team uh, started Skype. Since then, he's been in media and he's been in a, bu a bunch of other industries. Uh, so what I would like to do before introducing I would like to introduce a little bit of what they're doing in this beautiful movie. So please roll the Norm Norm movie. I click, therefore I am. to do, Jonas Kjellberg. When we started here in Epicenter and trying to change how we go and work at the office, you're taking further with how we furnish it. Take it away. <clears throat> Thank you, Ola. It's, it's a great pleasure of being here. And I remember the days when we were all starting. I think, you know, I looked up to you doing books, man. I thought, you know, I needed to be an entrepreneur and you set me off on a very strange journey. And then we met trying to, you know, take a small IP telephony company global. Um, but I think, as you all know, there's a, a lot of disruption happening, and I think we're all looking at, you know, what is the future way of working? I think this is nearly as exciting as when the internet industry started. It's like, because what happens now if you can work from anywhere, and, and how can you redefine it? And we said one of the most perspective perspective is how do we actually do with office furniture and also home office furniture? So we said, today it's interesting, you know, most companies 100 years ago owned their buildings. Today, 3 4% own their building. But nearly 100% still own their office furniture, which means that I think it's just broken. So for us, it's all about if you could stream furniture, no norm is it. We would want to create you know, the Netflix, the Spotify of office furniture. And of course, this is complicated. But we also want to do it in a totally new business model. So it's a fully circular, subscription-based furnishing model, flexible, affordable, and inspiring. And I think to do that, you need to change the business model. And this is what we're doing, because if you don't own, you can replace items. Then we can circulate to others, which makes it affordable for more. So I think by rethinking the way of ownership gives us the possibility to actually start circulating things between each other, making it more affordable. But I think where we started off was actually good for people, because we need to inspire people to work together and create creativity and productivity. I think you've done it really well here at Epicenter, you know, just creating a meeting space. But I think over time, every company would need this kind of meeting space, even if it's Epicenter or their own. So we took that start. We said, let's create three beautiful colors, Nordic light, Nordic dark, 
Nordic Black and White. And then they let's attract the best furniture brands in the world and define the iconic products. So we're super happy that we have Hey, Herman Miller, Gemla, Matella, Hem, Takt, Silencio now working with us. And we're trying to buy everything used. So we're trying to source everything that is used. So what we deliver is better than you. And we're trying to create. And the vision I have is that I want to be one of the largest furnishing companies in the world without owning any furniture. Right now, they're not there when I say to Ikea or Herman Miller, like, I'm super happy you can just place your furniture with me, and maybe you'll just get part of the revenue, like a Spotify model. It's confusing them a bit. But if you talk to Electrolux that is redoing a lot of things, they're like, oh, this is interesting. Maybe what happens if we can actually source in our stuff into your model, and you will actually distribute it again. So I think that is what we're looking at. Better than you, recycling everything. But of course, if we do this, we also need to create a timeless design to ensure long life. Because the business model for me is about having these furnitures deployed over and over again. That's how we're going to make money. So we do it for office spaces. And I think we all can agree that offices will look different. So what we're trying to do is collaboration areas, dining areas. We need different types of meeting places. And we also do home office. So we can actually deliver a home office to companies around the globe. And we're already doing it today. The second part is it needs to be good for business. It needs to be affordable. So there's no investment, no long-term commitment. You can cancel it whenever you want. And then you would say, OK, this must be very, very expensive. But we rethought the whole model. And we actually created a model now where we charge one euro per employee per day. That's less than you would actually pay for coffees. And we deliver all the furniture. And then if there are people in the real estate business that are a bit more traditional, but what does this calculate? It, around, you know, you need about 10 square meters per employee. So it's basically you're paying 3 euros per square meter per month. So basically 30 euros per employee you would pay for all your furniture. And that includes design, all the furniture, delivery, setup, flexibility. You can actually change whenever you want. Because we wanted to create a flexible solution. Because for me, as an entrepreneur, I hate furniture. I just want to run my business. I don't care about this. And one day, I'm five people. The next time, 500. I just want to change, iterate. So we said, we need to make it totally flexible. So if you want to change, we'll change for you. And we'll change different sets. So if you need meeting room, needs to be a dining room, we'll fix it. But of course, that creates it's a very, very simple idea. But the complexity behind it is enormous. So we created a switching days for different. So in Stockholm, there's switching days that week in Malmö, Gothenburg, Amsterdam, Singapore. We have different switching days where you can actually switch these things out. And we're building a total infrastructure. Because what hit me is there is no reverse logistics. Everything is built to deliver out. Nothing is built to return. And I think that is the whole perspective. And by taking this approach and rethinking it, we can actually define this so we now can actually deliver and pick up stuff because we need to know where they are, how, which furniture we should take out so everything is labeled, RFID tagged, so we can find the furniture, put them in these carts, and deliver them. And then we're also developing the perspective of having no waste because if you unpack furniture today, it's just amazing how much cardboard and, and air there is. So we're actually delivering this. And you and I think to Ula's point, we're not a furniture company. I want to be a tech company, because this is all about enabling technology. Uh, and we have innovated around these perspectives. So by using you know, uh, computer-aided design, we can actually deliver a floor plan in 48 hours or 24 hours. So if you're out there thinking, OK, how should my office look like tomorrow? And you would want to send something to your boss. Send us an email. Send us your floor plan or how big it is. And we can send you back a repurposed area in 3D in 24 hours. You can scan the stuff. You can return it. We have the reverse logistic. We also map out how you use the stuff. But I think this is one of the things we're super proud about, rethinking office space. And this is just an example how it could look like. And uh, we had thousands of these different floor plans, all iterated around creativity and rethinking. So basically, send us your floor plan, choose a style of function, approve the proposal, 
and then you can move in. We deliver in four weeks, which is also unheard of. So we already have stocked up and we have a lot of used furniture waiting, ready to go. But I think, why did I enter into this? What is the vision behind it? I think for me, it was all about you know, good for people. I want yeah, like the leadership of H&M, Leon Helmerson sitting here you know, just around the corner. Uh, when they open that door in Bangkok or in Bangladesh, I want them to see the exact same kind of furniture and the way of working as they have in the top executive. That is my mission. Why should it be different for top executives and people around the globe to have, actually have good offices? Everybody should have a good chair, have a great dining area. So we're trying to create the better work life for the many people. And we're on a mission to rethink the whole workspace perspective. And then you can say, okay, our model is built on variables others try to avoid. And what do I mean with that? I think the biggest challenge a lot of companies have today is that they love their old business model. They're in love with their old business model because it's great, profitable, especially retail. They want to still have stores. They want people to come pick it out. And they see everything else as competition or digital disruption. I would actually argue that retail's biggest problem is today is that you need to rethink your business model. And that's what we are doing. Because we don't know if this is going to be profitable only after 12 years, if the furniture has been used or not. Then we'll know if we're profitable or not. And that scares the shit out of most leadership. But, you know, we're humble when it comes to the task, but we must achieve, but bold in the ambition. So that is a bit of Nornor and where I'm spending my time. And in all the ventures I've been part of, I would say it's super fun to rethink something but doing it on a circular perspective where this would actually be a positive impact to the climate because there's so much furniture waste out there that we need to stop. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Very inspiring. Thank uh, you. And it's also that there's people just going to work 40 hours a week and then there's people like you, you and us. <laughs> this is true passion. Uh, and, and what I would like to say, if we could distill some of that disruptive thinking and some of that sort of passion, how can, and you've been a management consultant as well, how can we give advice to people thinking about these things and really want to have impact in their larger organizations. <clears throat> well, I think the biggest challenge is that people look at um, and talk about digital disruption. I would say the biggest challenge is the business model disruption because that is the hard part. You know, a, a digital perspective is just an overlay. It's actually having the guts to go to from physical retail and then going to e-commerce. You, you, you back your way into it instead of saying, okay, how do I go to a circular subscription model? How would that be? And that, of course, scares people. Then you can enable technology to get that done. But I think that's what scares people off. I often joke it was not Kodak didn't die because of digital disruption. They invented the goddamn camera. <laughs> the, the problem is when they did that, the revenue pool just collapsed. Yeah. And that's what, because no one wanted to pay a half a dollar for a photo anymore. And that then just disordered the whole company because there were 100,000 employees and everyone was great getting a lot of money. So. So they couldn't actually figure it out because the business model changed. But that's interesting. We, we, we've managed to sort of do the front end of digital transformation. But what's happening right now with, with what you guys are doing at Nor Norman and other companies, they're, they're actually the second generation digital revolution is on the processes, the supply chain, the actual business modeling. Uh, and that's going to be super exciting and, and expensive and a lot of mistakes and things like that will probably happen like always. But then somebody will be emerged as, as leaders in this. Why are you going to win? Well, I don't know. I think you know. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to have a you know a good batting average. And I've been out there doing a lot of business. I'm super humble, but I think it's, it's again the idea is there. I think everybody needs to change. And I think if it's not us, I would say in ten years' time you will look back and you would say that of course no one is buying office furniture anymore or home office furniture. It just doesn't make sense. And um, then if it's us or someone else, you know, we, you know, we started this hype and now it's, it's dead and Zoom is up there. So, so you never know. But I think it's more the perspective. But I would be bold saying, you know, when I invested in Salando, I said it would be bigger than H&M in 10 years. It didn't really match, but I think we were 10% <laughs> up to, to the market cap. But I would say, you know, Norum could be bigger than Ikea in 10 years. I would say it will be. <laughs> so I'm putting well, it out there. Uh, uh... <laughs> The, the, the true thing, the interesting thing about a vision is that it's just a bunch of crap on a piece of paper nobody cares about or the most important asset in a company. And I think certainly you have that vision. And I'll share uh, one of my favorites is, is uh, Ruben Rausing, the founder of 
Tetra Pak. He was actually enormously unprofitable the first 14 years. So could you imagine you go back to whichever stakeholder says, well, year 13, we see a slight shift, and then we're going to be the most successful company in Europe. Nobody believed him, so he bought back everybody's shares along the way. And at the end, it was him be becoming the richest man in Europe. So, you know, the, the road is already paved. Thank you very much for coming here and sharing. Contact Jonas if you want to know more. We're happy customers at Epicenter uh, 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 Amsterdam, and we're moving along with, with more partnerships. Perfect. Thank you great, very much. Great to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, now we're going to switch perspective a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, because we've been discussing now with entrepreneurs coming in from other angles than what is our sort of true passion here at the Epicenter Store. How will retail change in the future? And especially, how will the store make 